Are you looking for a way to more easily integrate AWS Lambda with your favorite monitoring, observability, security, governance, and other tools? Welcome to my Deep Dive Learning Path video series, where I show you everything about augmenting your Lambda functions using Lambda extensions. I'm Julian Wood, a senior developer advocate for serverless at AWS. In the series, I go through all the aspects of Lambda extensions and how to use them with your serverless functions. I start by helping you understand what extensions are, the use cases, and how they work. I then go into more details into the two different types of extensions. These are internal and external, with examples so you can see what they do. I show the changes to the Lambda lifecycle and how extensions can influence how the Lambda service works. I then dive even deeper into a two-parter and show you how to build your own extensions using the Extensions API. I cover how to include extensions when you package your functions as container images, and then also show how extensions can be used to send logs to custom destinations. I promise it's not going to be all slides. I'll be showing plenty of demos and diving into code too. In this first video, I'm going to be looking at what Lambda extensions are, their use cases, and how they work. If we think of a traditional compute environment, it may have long running processes which start when a host, VM, or container sidecar starts up. An agent or tool will then perform some work or analysis while it is servicing various requests. This agent or tool may run for the whole time after an instance is started until it is shut down. Lambda invokes your function in an execution environment, which provides a secure and isolated runtime environment and manages the resources required to run your function. If we had to have the same kind of model for Lambda, which has short-lived compute, where you don't pay for idle, this would be wasteful. If you had to maintain a long-running agent process that needed to stay running with intermittent invokes, this would cost more unnecessarily. And so we've released Lambda Extensions, which is a new way to easily integrate Lambda with your favorite tools. Lambda Extensions augment your Lambda functions and work within Lambda's shorter compute duration without having to maintain a long-running process. You can add an extension to your function, in effect plugging them in, and use existing tools to deeply integrate with the Lambda service to pull data out about function invocations. You use or consume the capabilities of an extension by dropping an extension into your environment and adding some configuration information via environment variables. This gives you more flexibility in the tools you choose, simplifies your architecture, and helps you reduce function code, which is always a winner in my book. There are a number of use cases for extensions. These include observability and logging, being able to capture diagnostic telemetry data not only during function invocation, but before and after as well. You can use extensions which automatically instrument your code to get insights into how your functions are running. Or you can use extensions to fetch and cache configuration settings or other values before your functions themselves run. And hardened security agents can run as extensions to detect an alert on function activity. Extensions extend Lambda's invocation lifecycle to only run when there is something to do and not needlessly run when there isn't something to do. They can also continue to run after a function invocation has finished to send telemetry data out about the invocation. They can initialize and work before the runtime starts and can perform cleanup tasks before the execution environment is spun down. We know that you have a wide range of systems you need to manage and may prefer to use a single commercial or open source stack to operate your on-prem and AWS based systems rather than mix and match operation systems or have to use something specific or different for serverless. Lambda Extensions is designed to support the tools you already use today to observe and operate Lambda functions. They are simple to configure and manage. As you can see from the list, there are a number of extensions and integrations already available from AWS and our many partners, and there are more to come. We're looking forward to also see how more partners and open source communities and individual customers will innovate with extensions and make it even easier to operate Lambda-based applications. So let's have a look at how extensions actually work. There are three broad categories of extensions. There are the extensions themselves and how you can use or consume an extension by adding them into your environment by configuring the options in your function. I cover how to use extensions in more detail in the video on internal and external extensions. 
The Extensions API makes it easy to build or integrate your own tools to hook into the Lambda lifecycle and get greater visibility and control during function initialization, invocation, and shutdown. There are two videos in the series going deep into how to interact with the API. And then there's the Logs API, which allows extensions to get logs data directly from the Lambda service, which can be sent on elsewhere. Each of these broad topics also has related blog posts if you also want to read an overview. And as I've mentioned, I'll be covering all these details and more throughout the video series. You deploy extensions into your environment for zip archive functions by using whatever tools you currently use to build Lambda functions to add a Lambda layer to your function, and then add some configuration information via environment variables to use the capabilities of an extension. For extensions deployed as container images, you include the extensions within the function image within the Docker file, and you can also create shareable extension container images. When Lambda, Lambda starts up the execution environment for each Lambda function invocation, it searches the slashed opt slashed extensions directory and starts any extensions found. The extensions do need to be executable for this to work. Lambda supports two types of extensions, internal and external extensions. Internal extensions run in process with your code as separate threads, but still within the runtime process. External extensions run as completely separate processes, but still within the same execution environment as the Lambda function. Internal extensions allow you to configure the runtime environment and modify the startup of the runtime process within the single runtime process. The runtime process controls the lifecycle and starts and stops internal extensions. Internal extensions have two ways to operate using language specific environment variables and wrapper scripts. These give you a way to add startup parameters to the runtime or enable code to be preloaded during function initialization without modifying your actual function code. Internal extensions can auto-instrument your code in this way. Language-specific environment variables work using the native language Java tools options, node options, or .NET startup hooks environment variables with the runtimes listed. Wrapper scripts allow you to delegate runtime startup to a script, which you can configure to do something or pass extra parameter options to the interpreter. An external extension runs as an independent process separate from the runtime, but still within the execution environment. You can see the process boundaries here. It can start before the runtime process and continues to run after the function invoke is fully processed. Because external extensions run as their own processes, you can write them in a different language than the function, best done as a self-contained compiled binary that's compatible with all of the supported runtime. Time now to look at resources and security and how extensions work with your Lambda functions. As extensions run in the same execution environment as the Lambda function, they share resources with the function, such as CPU, memory, and temp disk storage. Extensions also need to be compatible with the associated operating system. And if an extension needs any network access, for example, you must apply network egress rules to the function configuration. In addition, extensions share the same IAM role and security context as the function. So the extension has access to everything the function has access to. And if the extension needs access to something, this must be included in the function IAM role. You can include up to 10 extensions per function. These can be packaged in up to five Lambda layers for zip archive functions, and you can package multiple extensions in a Lambda layer. For container image functions, you build and include the extension files within the container image. The size of your function's extension counts towards the, the deployment package size limit. For a zip archive function, the total size of the function and all extensions can't exceed the unzipped deployment package size of 250 meg. For a container image function, this is much larger at 10 gig. And looking at performance, there are a few things to bear in mind with extensions. Extensions can impact the performance of your function because they share function resources such as CPU, memory, and storage. For example, if an extension performs some compute intensive operations, you may see your function's execution duration increase. As extensions also initialize, initialize before the runtime process starts, they must finish initialization before Lambda invokes the function. An extension with a longer initialization time can increase the delay before the function is invoked, which can add latency. 
You can add more memory to a function, which also proportionally adds CPU and network throughput if your extension requires more resources. And during an invocation, the function and all extensions must complete within the function's configured timeout settings, or the function will error. To measure the extra time that the extension takes after the function invocation, you can use the new post runtime execution duration function metric. You can also use the CloudWatch duration and max memory use metrics to measure the overall increase in time and memory use. And to understand the impact of a specific extension, you can run different versions of your functions side by side with and without the specific extension and work out the impact. For pricing, extensions shares the same billing model as Lambda. You pay for the same number of requests served and the combined compute time. So this is the total time that the function and all extensions run for, and this is measured in one millisecond granularity. So I've been through how Lambda extensions are a new way to integrate a whole set of tools with Lambda. You add them to your functions to augment the capabilities of your functions for a number of use cases. There are a number of extensions available today from AWS and our many partners. I went through the basics of deploying an extension and the two types, internal and external. Lastly, I went through the resources, security, performance, and pricing aspects of extensions. In the next video, I'm going to be taking a deeper look into internal extensions and how they work. For plenty more serverless information, head over to serverlessland.com with lots of resources, blogs, videos, workshops, and learning paths. Everything about serverless on AWS. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to learn about Lambda extensions, and hopefully you'll be able to put what you've seen into action. My name is Julian Wood, and you can find me on Twitter at Julian underscore Wood.